Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our 64th annual general meeting. We're delighted to welcome those of you who are here today. Thank you for joining us in person, along with some of our employees and management team. We encourage you to ask questions at the appropriate time during the meeting, or please feel free to seek us out following the meeting for a personal chat. For those of you joining virtually around Australia, you can participate by typing a question in the platform, and I will address them towards the end of our presentation. My name is Jen Dallitz. I'm the Deputy Chair of QDOS Bank, and I'll be chairing this annual general meeting on behalf of our Chair, Rodney Watson, who is unavailable to join us today. Before commencing, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm hosting this meeting from the lands of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. I also acknowledge the traditional custodians of the various lands from which you all join us today, and any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people participating in this meeting. I pay my respects to their elders past and present and celebrate the diversity of Aboriginal peoples and their ongoing culture and connections to the land and waters of Australia. It is with great pleasure that I declare open the 64th Annual General Meeting for Kudos Bank. Firstly, as has been our custom for checking the accuracy of minutes, this meeting will be recorded. I'd now like to outline some procedural matters and explain how you can participate in the meeting if you have registered as a member. Guests can view the meeting but cannot participate. There are five motions on notice for voting this year. Voting on the resolutions will be by poll, which I now declare open. You will be able to vote at any time during the AGM via the voting icon on the screen if you are joining us virtually, or by completing your voting card if you're with us in person. Voting will remain open until I close the poll at the end of the agenda item five. To vote via the online meeting link, tap on um, the voting option and your response will be highlighted. To change your vote, you simply press a different option and you'll have the chance to amend it in that way. Due to live online voting options, the results for the resolutions will be tabulated by our returning officer, Computer Share, after the conclusion of the meeting and announced on our website tomorrow. You can submit questions during the meeting and we will answer as many as possible when discussing the relevant resolution or during general business. Uh, if you're participating online, you can ask a question by selecting the messaging tab at the top of the Lumi platform. At the top of that tab, there's a section for you to type your question. Once you've finished, finished typing, please hit the arrow symbol to send it to us. And you can also note your questions can be moderated. If we receive multiple similar questions, we might amalgamate them. If you'd prefer to ask a verbal question and you're participating online, you can also do that by pressing pause on the broadcast, and then you can click on the link in the home tab under the heading asking audio questions and follow the instructions. Finally, due to time constraints, we may not be able to answer all questions we receive today. And if that happens, we'll answer them by posting responses on our website tomorrow or by responding directly to you. If you need technical assistance at any time, for those of you online, um, you might like to grab a pen and write down this phone number and you can call for assistance. It's 03 9415 4024. I'd like to thank the members of the management team at QDOS, our employees and our partners who have provided support to ensure this event runs smoothly. We welcome our external auditor, Graham Scott from KPMG, and our returning officer, Barry Azapati from ComputerShare, who have joined us this afternoon. The minutes of our last annual general meeting held on the 24th of November, 2022, have been accepted by the board of directors as an accurate record of that meeting and have been signed by me. Copies of the minutes are available on our website at kudosbank.com.au backslash AGM. 
there are no matters arising from those minutes. Are there any questions from members about the minutes? Thank you, I'll move on. I'll now turn to receipt and consideration of the 2023 annual report. The 2023 financial year reflects our strong financial performance and continued commitment to being purpose-led and returning value to our customers, culminating in being awarded Customer-Owned Bank of the Year with CanStar and Australia's Best Customer-Owned Bank with Mozo Experts Choice Award. Since Kudos Bank was founded, we have believed in doing the right thing for our customers and community and in the power of people coming together to pursue financial freedom. In 2022, we decided to redefine an ambitious vision for Kudos Bank in the year 2030 through the lens of our customers, employees and partner shareholders and partner stakeholders. A vision of a proudly purpose-led, values-driven, sustainable and resilient customer-owned bank. During the year, we undertook a process of redefining our purpose to achieve that vision, which involved collaboration and consultation with our board, our management team, employees and many customers. So while we've been purpose-led since 1959, the renewed definition of our purpose and mission better articulates our innate reason for existence and acts as a guide for accountable decision makers. Our purpose at Kudos Bank is to help people realise their full potential. Over the coming months, we will engage with our employees to refresh our values the Kudos way. While our values and the representation may evolve over the coming months, the foundations of them remain based on supporting our purpose of realising your full potential. To meet our purpose, we will continue to listen and learn. We need to understand your position today so we can help you tomorrow. We will help you build strong foundations for the future and navigate financial complexity together. We will protect your assets and help you maximise your wealth to achieve more. And our mission. Like family, we'll always champion people to achieve more for themselves, their community and the planet. The unifying core of these statements are founded on our heart, our customers. You, our people, our community and the planet, we're accountable to each and every one of you. We pledge to keep our customer first values always and act with purpose when delivering customer value. To be purpose led means that we will strive as a bank that has highly engaged customers, leads in customer experience, shares values with our customers, people and community, is an employer of choice, is sustainable and resilient in business and works towards becoming B Corp certified. Our strategy for the next three years is aligned with our renewed purpose and vision to increase customer value by strengthening and deepening our core product and service offering. Focusing, in, focusing on being best at what we do, empowering our people and leveraging our partner relationships. To provide a faster and more efficient loan application process, we launched a new straight through loan application processing platform in 2023, which is now live for new home loans across all channels. Key enhancements delivered by the platform include the ability to bundle multiple applications into a single assessment and full integration with brokers and service providers. This leading technology allowed us to process 50% more loan applications than the previous year, while achieving significantly lower processing times for similar volumes. 
The platform will be rolled out to our existing home loans and personal loans in the coming year. We also introduced electronic signing of loan documents via DocuSign, saving time for our customers and reducing paper usage by over 400,000 pages per year. Ongoing enhancements to our payments, online and mobile banking platforms provided our customers with faster, easier and safer ways to bank. We introduced Pay2, a new efficient alternative and it enables all of you to process your payments um, faster than direct debits and safer, as well as giving the functionality to allow greater control for customers over the sharing of data through open banking. We hope you've taken advantage of the video series created to provide step-by-step -step guidance on how to manage pay to agreements. The 3D secure service to verify online payments or purchases made using Visa debit or credit cards was extended to FPOS. This service increases your protection when shopping online by adding an additional verification step during the payment process. Our customers' banking experience was improved by enhancing accessibility and features in our mobile banking app, which holds Apple and Android App Store ratings of 4.1 and 4.2 out of 5, respectively. Your valuable feedback and reviews goes a long way to help our teams deliver the best service and product improvements. By way of example, a customer review on productreview.com recently acknowledged the simplicity and assurance of our app. It also includes feedback that helps us improve in an ongoing way into the future. In this feedback we received recently, our customer Leo P21, if you're on the line, Leo, hi from all of us. Um, but I want to share this feedback, um, which, which is this. It's a great app. I love how clear and easy it is to use, especially for paying and receiving money. It's very simple and intuitive to achieve these tasks. It amazes me that some other bank apps can make these processes unnecessarily convoluted. Money is received and paid instantly, which some big banks don't offer, which is such a plus. I love that, I, that it identifies when scheduled payments are due for the mortgage. My only piece of feedback is it would be great to know the amount of the scheduled payments coming out to make sure there's enough in the account to allow for these scheduled payments. So thanks Leo P21 for your kind words and helpful feedback. I'm sure the tech team are here listening to that and figuring out how they can solve that extra problem for you. But we, we love that our customers enjoy using our mobile banking app and we love receiving feedback from our members and customers. And now to governance. Um, we remain steadfast in our commitment to strong governance to in ensure security, stability, risk management and sustainable growth and to prioritise the interests of customers and employees. A new board committee was established during the reporting period with the crucial mandate of conducting an objective review and oversight of Kudos Bank's endeavours to enhance member engagement, amplify the voice of customer and to deliver banking services embedded in customer care. The remit of our remuneration committee was also expanded to ensure continued focus on Kudos Bank's commitment to people as our greatest asset. The board has integrated responsible and sustainable business practices into our approach to investing by adopting a responsible investing policy. The bank has committed that we will not directly lend or invest in businesses whose primary purpose harms people, animals, society or the environment such as fossil fuels, uranium, weapons, gambling, tobacco, alcohol, pornography, deforestation or live export. The bank conducted a review of the ESG and community policies of its eligible counterparties during the financial year with a view to better understand their environmental, social and governance practices, such as being environmentally and socially responsible, promoting workplace safety and diversity 
and supporting their communities. Kudos Bank contributes to charity, its communities, and maintains ethical and environmentally sustainable business practices. During the year, Kudos Bank was awarded Climate Active, carbon neutral certification having taken steps to reduce its greenhouse emissions and for credibly reaching a state of carbon neutrality, a milestone we're very proud of and will continue to walk, work towards building upon. I'd like to acknowledge some key leadership contributions for the 2023 financial year. I want to take this opportunity to thank Michael Anastasi, our former CEO. On behalf of the board, I extend our sincere gratitude to Michael for his dedicated 19 years service to Kudos Bank. I'd also like to share a personal thank you to Cindy Hansen, who took on the Deputy CEO role supporting Rodney Watson during his time, as, as his time acting as Executive Chair. Thank you for your continued contribution to the bank, Cindy. Cindy's return to her role as Chief Strategy and Transformation Officer, continuing her work in the oversight of our strategy and transformation programs. I'd also like to wel welcome Rob Robert Agati, our new company secretary who joins us today. Welcome, Robert. Finally, I'd like to thank all of our management team who led our people during significant change over the past 12 months. Our people are committed to delivering the best for our customers, our community and planet, and we pride ourselves on our ability to connect on a personal level and consider ourselves part of a family network. An essential services provider helping Australian families reach their full potential. We strive to connect the dots for those looking to improve their financial well-being through education, information and easy to use banking services. My fellow board directors, executive management and leaders of Kudos Bank are dedicated to leading with purpose, in alignment with our values and broader community expectations. In the months ahead, you will hear and learn more about how we will live up to our new purpose and our transformative initiatives. With the appointment of Brendan Wright as CEO, Rodney has reverted to his previous non-executive role as chair of the board, reinforcing the board's commitment to maintaining independent governance. Brendan will steer the bank through our transformative journey ahead and looks forward to bringing our new purpose and strategy to life. I want to formally welcome and hand over to Brendan Wright, our new CEO. Brendan is a highly accomplished senior executive with over 20 years leadership experience in financial services, including retail banking, commercial lending and mortgage broking. His career achievements include Chief Executive Officer at Mortgage Finance Aggregator bro Broker Fintech Platform Fast Group and Executive Leadership Roles within National Australia Bank. Brendan has also worked in consulting and currently sits on the board of CETO Plus, a broker software solution provider, as a non-executive director. I'd now like to hand over to Brendan. Thanks, Jen. Well, I'm, I'm sincerely humbled by this opportunity to join the Kudos family and guide the bank through this transformative stage and phase. I'm proud to join an organisation that values its people and its members first and foremost. As a customer-owned bank, Kudos has a long heritage of a family culture and delivering to its members. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for your continued support and feedback. The unique relationship we have between our members and our people has always set us apart and we're committed to growing this connection as we evolve over the year ahead and beyond. Before I share more about our plans for the future, I'd like to reflect on our strong financial results. So on financial performance, the 2023 financial year saw Kudos Bank achieve strong financial results, deliver on key projects and improve customer service. Such achievements are a testament to the strong loyalty shown by our customers and members 
and the hard work and dedication of our people. I'm pleased to report that 6.3% growth in members and 7% growth in lending, in conjunction with excellent return on our investments, contributed to a strong year-end pre-tax profit of $26.2 million, up 16.6% on the previous year. On the asset side, our total assets grew by 5.3% to $5.467 billion. It is important to remember that as a listed customer, sorry, as an unlisted customer-owned bank, retained earnings are our main source of capital and the foundation of our future around growth and our, sorry, our future, foundation of our future and our growth. 30 June 2023, our capital adequacy rating was a solid 15.91%, well above prudential requirements. On the deposit side, retail deposits, which are key to funding our future growth, grew by 1.4% in 2023 to $4.7 billion. And our high quality liquid assets, that is the assets that can be easily, quickly converted to cash, at 30 June 2023 was 19.22%. And our liabilities, largely depositor funds, um, the, the liquid assets made up 19.22% of those liabilities. The 2022-2023 financial year saw record levels of inflation in Australia coming off the back of COVID, the impact of the war in Ukraine and strong consumer demand. This resulted, as you all know, in rapid in interest rate increases with 12 increases in the cash rate in the 13 months to June 30, 2023. The 2023-2024 financial year will continue to bring its own headwinds and planning required. Given the increased global uncertainty throughout the year, we actively managed our Treasury book to mitigate geopolitical risks and have increased scrutiny of all operating risks. The current economic environment has also presented cost of living pressures for our customers, our people, operational impacts on our people as well, and a balancing act for Kudos Bank as we manage our financial risks while considering the impact on both our borrowers and depositors. From a membership perspective, Despite the challenges, our membership numbers have reinvigorated, have reinvigorated following our reduction in 2022, which was post a regulated dormancy process. I'm, <coughs> excuse me. I'm pleased to see that we are, we are returning closer to our previous records of over 100,000 members across Australia. On the loan side, our strong performance and investment returns allowed us to put our customers first by passing on interest rate increases to our savings accounts while balancing interest rates for some of our more heavily impacted home loan customers. We proactively reached out to our customers nearing the end of the fixed rate home loan period they were experiencing to discuss the available options. And unlike many banks switch such loans to variable standard variable rate, we offered the relevant new business rate. By actively managing our interest rate margin, we'll be able to provide these initiatives, which is estimated given, giving back more than $2 million to our customers while prudently increasing margin to 1.6% in the financial year. In addition, we provided tailored support to our customers experienced financial difficulty. Well, although pleasingly in loan arrears, it continues to be low, reflecting our responsible lending practices. On a, from an awards perspective, which Jen touched on in her opening, in 2023, we received numerous industry awards, showcasing our, commit, our continued focus on returning value to our members. We won two home loan awards, a turn deposit award from Mozo, as well as being named Australia's best customer-owned bank, Mozo's Expert Choice Award, for the third year in a row. Recognising that when looking across a range of products, this award acknowledges that Kudos Bank looks after our customers no matter what their needs. CanStar awarded us their home lending outstanding value 
and Bearable Home Lending Award, and we regained the title of Customer Owned Bank of the Year, which is awarded to the bank that provides their customers with the strongest combination of banking products across home loans, deposits, credit cards and personal loans, as well as customer satisfaction. We also won Most Innovative Bank in the DBM Australian Financial Awards for 2023. This award is based, this award is based on information collected from the DBM Atlas Research Program, feedback from over 80,000 businesses and or retail customers, uh, which forms the basis of the awards. While it's nice to win the awards, the true importance of these awards is the acknowledgement of our commitment, Kudos Bank, to our customers. On safety and security, our customers' safety and security continues to be a top priority and we employ a range of security measures to protect our customers' personal information and transactions to keep them safe and stay informed and take the actions needed to protect themselves. A dedicated fraud and security section on our website sets out some of the measures we take, as well as providing a range of information and videos about how to fight fraud and what to do when fraud occurs. As a part of our continual improvements to strengthen security and to respond to the rise in frauds and scams, we implemented an additional layer of security for online banking. We also became a founding member of Fraud Reporting Exchange, FRX, launched in May 2023, which is a trusted, secure, single platform for reporting and actioning fraudulent activities between issuing and receiving financial institutions. Through our monitoring activities and the efforts of our fraud team during the financial year, Kudos Bank was able to prevent and recover 3.1 million of the 4.98 million in attempted fraud transactions, 62%. In the coming year, we will invest in technology and processes to further enhance our anti-money laundering and counter-terrorist financing program that helps protect Kudos Bank, our customers and the community against criminal activity. On the community, we are proud to have continued our long-standing support of Qantas Pathfinders, well over 50 years involvement by helping them cover the costs and donating prizes to their annual review, highly entertaining event, which raised over 230,000 in October 2022 for Next Sense, which was formerly the Royal Institute for the Deaf and Blind Children. We recently donated a further $5,000 support to their 2023 review, Coronation, the Changing of the Guard. Highly entertaining as well. During the year, we supported several worthy causes, including Black Dog, Reforest Now, Jeans for Jeans, Little Wings, to name a few. In September 2022, Reforest Now planted 2,000 trees on behalf of Kudos Bank for its Banyala Place of Many Trees project to restore the Buyong Nature Reserve on the lands of the Bungjong Nation near Clunes, New South Wales. The reserve represents less than 1% of the original extent of the Big Scrub Rainforest which used to cover most of the Northern Rivers region and has been identified as a critically endangered ecosystem. For more than 15 years, Kudos Bank offset the carbon emissions for one motor vehicle for each employee with Greenfleet. And in April 2023, our employees volunteered to plant trees with Greenfleet at Bonner Point in Kurnell, located on the lands of the Darrell people in New South Wales. Because our customers and their communities are a part of everything we do. It is important we sure, in, to ensure we play our part in combating climate change and becoming carbon neutral ourselves and reducing our carbon emissions. I'd like to congratulate the board, the management and the management team for meeting carbon neutral certification and remain intent on working towards reaching our future sustainability targets. On our people, in May 2023, we launched the collaborative platform Viva Exchange to foster communication across Kudos Bank. We continue to provide growth opportunities with our Accelerate program by rotating employees through different areas of the business and offered ongoing development opportunities and coaching 
to enhance career growth. As a part of our commitment to wellbeing of our employees, we introduced Qdos Well, providing financial assistance to wellness activities. All employees completed psychological safety training to support safe environment and a culture where everyone's voice is valued. During Mental Health Month May, we featured an on-site massage angels and therapy dogs, and throughout the year, we facilitated free flu vaccination and skin cancer checks. We, do, we celebrated diversity and inclusion through uh, cultural celebrations and provided ex education through important topics such as resilience, gender equality, and Pride Month. Kudos Bank has embarked on a journey that will set us up not only to survive, but to thrive. We are working toward a five-year plan to embrace digital transformation that will set us up for the challenges of a dynamic future with an emphasis on maintaining our culture and caring for our customers. The best equip, to best equip our leaders and the skills they need to lead our people and the bank through a successful transformation, we've commenced a leadership development program with Deacon Co. The program will run for 12 months, empowering our leaders to navigate organisational change and transformation, developing their capabilities to help us pivot to a current, from current state to future state. Underpinning our strategy is a sustainable business model to achieve our purpose in the long run. Our research has confirmed that customers understand the need for Qdos Bank to grow so that we continue to provide competitive products and services, stronger security and greater trust and reliability. I really do look forward to being of service to our customers, our people, our community and the board. Thank you. Thank you, Brendan. And again, welcome to the family. On behalf of the board, I'd like to take this time to thank you, our members. We're extremely grateful for your continued support and loyalty. I'd like to recognise each of our directors and their valuable contribution to ensure our business remains competitive, maintains growth, strong governance, and continues to provide benefits back to our customers, to the community, and to the planet. And now I'll move on to agenda item four, our directors. I'll move to the formal part of the meeting and introduce the resolution to re-elect retiring directors, Joe Dix and Andrew Leithhead. As there were no new nominations submitted as part of the 2023 call for directors, there was no director election this year and retiring directors, Joe Dix and and Andrew Leithhead have agreed to stand for re-election by ordinary resolution in according with the constitution. Their profiles were included in the explanatory statement which formed part of the notice of annual general meeting. Directors unanimously support their re-election and recommend that members vote for the resolutions. We have received a number of undirected proxies in respect of these resolutions and as chair, I intend to vote all undirected proxies in favour of the resolutions. Is there any discussion regarding these resolutions? If not, I will now put the following ordinary resolutions to the meeting. To consider, and if thought fit, pass the following ordinary resolutions that Andrew Leithhead, a director retiring in accordance with Article 12.3 of the Constitution and being eligible, is re-elected as a director of the company, and that Joe Dix, a director retiring in accordance with Article 12.3 of the Constitution and being eligible, is re-elected as a director of the company. And as a reminder, you will have until the close, uh, until the close until I close the voting after item five to vote on all resolutions. The returning officer has informed me that 41 members have provided an undirected proxy in favour of the chair regarding the re-election of Andrew Leithhead, whilst 41 members have provided an undirected proxy regarding the re-election of Joe Dix. 
I have informed the returning officer that I intend to, insofar as I am eligible, to cast all undirected proxy votes received from members in favour of both resolutions. All other attendees who hold undirected proxies have been provided with additional voting cards and I ask that they complete a voting card for each personal vote and proxy that they hold. Whilst the results from voting on these resolutions will be tabulated by the returning officer computer share after the close of the meeting and announced on our website tomorrow, I'm pleased to announce that being eligible under the constitution, the board resolved to reappoint Claire Mazzetti as a board appointed director for a further term of three years from the close of the AGM. And now to agenda item five direct remuneration, which comes in three parts. The first remuneration resolution seeks member approval to increase director fees, which have not changed since 2016. Since 2016, the remuneration gap against the bank's industry peers has continued to widen, creating a risk that the bank may not be able to attract and retain directors who are both sufficiently qualified and experienced to govern a large mutual bank. Should this resolution be passed, this will see director fees increase by $30,527 from $45,000 per annum to $75,527 per annum. The second remuneration resolution proposes that the allowance currently paid to the chair will be decreased from 90% to 80% and is contingent on the approval of the first remuneration resolution. The third resolution relates to allowances paid to the chairs of the board standing committees. While the payment of a 25% allowance to the deputy chair and to chairs of audit and risk committees remains unchanged, it is proposed that this allowance be extended to the chairs of other board standing committees. Should any one or all of the three remuneration resolutions be passed, the changes are proposed to take effect from the 1st of October 2023 and will also include minimum applicable statutory superannuation contributions. Directors unanimously support the proposals and recommend that members vote for the resolutions. Again, we have received a number of undirected proxies in respect of these resolutions. And as chair, I intend to vote all undirected proxies in favour of the resolutions. Members may recollect that a resolution to increase director remuneration and to move to an aggregated board remuneration pool was not passed at last year's AGM. The reason cited and the feedback we received was that the proposed resolution and explanation were too complicated. Accordingly, the board agreed to propose revised remuneration resolutions this year, which seeks member approval to adjust the fee for each director to the midpoint of our peer group while retaining the current remuneration structure and leaving committee attendance fees unchanged. Subject to this resolution being passed, it agreed that allowance paid to the chair should be decreased from 90% to 80%. In addition, whilst it's proposed to leave the allowance paid to the deputy chair and to chairs of the audit committee and risk committee unchanged at 25%, Member approval is being sought to extend the 25% allowance to the chairs of the board's other standing committees to reflect their increased fiduciary responsibilities for these committees. And I might say the significant workload that goes with it. The board is committed to balancing the need to adequately remunerate directors with the bank's principles and mutuality, to attract and maintain appropriately experienced directors, encourage enhanced performance by the bank and offer the highest levels of service to members. The bank's aim is to remunerate directors at the midpoint of comparable financial institutions in keeping with those principles, to pay the directors fairly. In setting the proposed directors' fees, the board has considered several surveys of its peers, including the non-executive director survey conducted by the Financial Institution Remuneration Group published in March 2023, 
the 2023 Mutual Board Remuneration Survey Report published by McGurk Management Consultants, and the 2023 Customer-Owned Banking Association Non-Executive Director Survey conducted by Aon Advisory Services, uh, Aon Advisory Australia Proprietary Limited and COBA, the Customer-Owned Banking Association. All surveys indicated that the bank's director fees were in the bottom quartile against comparable financial institutions. While the current board has strong experience and expertise to oversee the affairs of the bank, if this imbalance is not corrected, the risk of attrition and the inability to attract and or retain high quality, high quality directors posed a concern as to the continuing sound and prudential management of the bank. The board has overseen strong performance in the 2022-23 financial year as set out in our annual report, as outlined earlier today, while maintaining a competitive product and service offering for our customers. This culminated in Kudos Bank once again being awarded Customer-Owned Bank of the Year by CanStar and Mozo. Since 2016, the board has continued to strengthen its risk and governance frameworks, further enhance products and services, give back to our members, people and the planet. Some of these initiatives include competing, completing a comprehensive board renewal process to implement tenure limits approved by members and ensure that the board has the necessary skills and experience for the effective and prudent management of the bank. Conducting a review and refresh of the bank's purpose, identity and strategic direction. Restructuring board committees to further embed the bank's commitment to our purpose, members and employees. Commissioning several independent third party reviews to uplift the bank's risk and governance frameworks. Implementing a new lending origination system, which I spoke about earlier, and electronic signing of loan documents, which have improved our customer experience, increased efficiencies and reduced paper usage. We've launched various improvements to the bank's payments, online and mobile banking platforms to provide customers with faster, easier and safer ways to transact. We've proactively engaged with home loan customers by providing assistance during COVID and more recently for those customers nearing the end of their fixed rate home loan terms in an environment of rising interest rates. And we've commenced major projects to engage better with our members and renew our commitment to good environmental, social and governance practices, including achieving climate action accreditation as a carbon neutral organisation. It's important to understand the critical role that the board plays in the prudent governance and success of the bank. The Kudos Bank Board has overall responsibility for the sound and prudential management of the bank, ensuring its strength and security for members now and into the future. It is responsible for the governance, strategic direction and effective oversight of management of the bank and is accountable to members for the bank's performance. The board is also responsible for establishing and maintaining a sound risk management culture across the bank. It ensures that the bank has in place an appropriate risk management framework, both for financial and non-financial risk, and sets the risk appetite within which the board expects, expects our management to operate. The board is dedicated to fulfilling these duties in a lawful and professional manner with the utmost integrity and objectivity. As such, the board pursues best practice governance processes in keeping with community expectations and its primary regulator, the Australian Prudential Regulation Authority. The personal liabilities held by directors are significant including the accountability obligations established by the Banking Executive Accountability Regime overseen by APRA. These obligations and personal liability as a result 
are due to increase with the introduction of the financial accountability regime, which comes into effect in March 2024. Since director fees were last changed in 2016, the workload complexity and expectations faced by Australian boards has also increased significantly, especially in the world of banking. The sector has been subject of a Royal Commission, heightened regulatory scrutiny and increasing instances and severity of cybercrime and fraud. To remain sustainable and competitive, the bank needs to continue to attract and retain directors with the skills, capability and commitment to navigate and oversee an ever-increasing number, variety and complexity of challenges faced by the bank and to pursue the sustainable creation, protection and return of value to our members. Is there any discussion regarding these resolutions? Um, so with the um, increase in director remuneration, can you give a percentage of the increase and the increase compared to um, the staff of Kudos Bank, how much um, their salaries and remuneration have increased as a percentage? Sure. So as to the percentage, I'm not going to do that off the top of my head. Um, there you go, 60%. Uh, so, so what I would say is that since 2016, seven years have passed. So if we were to annualise that over an, an on year-on-year -year basis, I'm sure many of you in the room would have received pay rises over that period. Um, the directors here have not. So what we're seeking to do is to benchmark to the midpoint of what, um, what is offered by our peers in the industry. So that's why we undertook that research across the different groups. And we have pegged ourselves right in the middle of our peer group. So not asking to be at the top, but not expecting to be at the bottom. And as to the comparable to staff, we do the same exercise actually every year with our staff and we look across our peers as to how our, our peers are paying and what the market rate is for our staff. And we do adjustments every year actually as an organisation to ensure our people are being paid fairly. So we apply the same process to our people that we're expecting to apply to the directors. And we look also to pay around in that middle of the band, generally speaking. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to the CEO and the board. I've got a few questions here. Uh, has the board ever considered an IPO for Kudos Bank? Uh, the reason why is the, the credit union originally was formed 64 years ago, and there's a lot of people here who were the found, founding members of it who are no longer here. The assets are worth $5.7 Nobody owns it, except for the members. So has Kudos, the board, ever considered putting an IPO and listing Kudos? If not, uh, the major banks, as the CEO is from a bank before with the National Bank, uh, the banks are interested in buying people like Kudos because it's a customer owned, owned uh, because as you said, the 5.7 billion assets that Kudos is worth, is worth nothing if you close your account. And while we're all members, it's worth 5.7 billion. So unless we have a discussion and vote for it to make an IPO like NRMA did, like NIB did, is that we should all benefit while we still have accounts and people are still alive. Because 64 years ago, a lot of these people aren't here now. Sure. Another thing is, with the, the young man said, the 60% increase, why didn't you phase it, say, over the next three years? 60% in one go. If I said to you, I'm putting up your rent 60%, you wouldn't like it, would you? Well, 
I'll answer the. Oh, sorry, yes. you've got another question. Or yeah, do you want me to questions. answer as I go because it might get confusing otherwise? So perhaps I'll go to the first one around IPO. No, we're not considering. We are committed to being a customer-owned bank, and we have not at this stage considered why doing that? that. Why is that? Why we, Why haven't you not considered it when there's so many elderly elderly people who have had accounts who are the founding members of a credit union that it belongs to us and why wasn't it considered? What I can say is that we do every year consider our strategy as an organisation and we are committed to being a customer-owned bank and to delivering, delivering value for our members as a customer-owned bank and we do not intend at this time to depart from that strategy. Yeah, but if you turn it to an IPO, I, I might move on to in the interest of time. I'm happy to address that with you separately, okay. but to answer your question, that's All right. well, it's, our commitment. Well, it's out there now, so you just can have a discussion of it. Uh, the arena, Kudos Arena. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me how much money it cost us to sponsor Kudos Arena? I can't tell you under the commercial arrangements. Why is that? Because, it's, members, aren't we, aren't we? because it's commercial in confidence, but I can tell you that we do consider that a very important part of our marketing strategy. Do you have a corporate box as a major sponsor? Uh, have a yes, box? there is a there is okay. a, there is a, a, a various different okay. opportunities to so use the arena. Board uses kudos. No, that's not correct. But I'm happy to again have a conversation with you about that. Okay. What I will say is that the arena has been an important part of our marketing strategy and has it helped us to increase our branding and awareness across our member base. So uh, you have $4.2 billion worth of loans and you have deposits of $4.6 billion and your profit is $26 million. So in my calculation, it's roughly just over half a percent. Your net profit is a half a percent of the total loans that you lent out. And then and this is why this young man said you're, you're – you want a pay rise of 60% and your profitability is roughly half a percent of your, t of your loans. Uh, another thing is my son twice reborrowed re finance for his place. Twice I told him, check kudos. Mm -hmm. Been a member for, for over 30 years. You're not competitive. You're not competitive. Like you won the award. But that award is not very big because it's customer owned. You're not competing against other big banks. Because years ago, when it was a credit union, you were in the top five cheapest home loans. You're no longer in the top five cheapest home loans. Your margins are going higher and you're not helping your members enough. I, I don't think you're helping your members enough and you're not competitive enough as you were in the old days. Well, what I can say to our competitive position is that we are constantly reviewing both what we offer to our borrowers and to our depositors. So we are always looking to balance the need to be sustainable with all of the various laws and requirements around responsible lending and very happy to have a chat with you about your personal circumstances separately. I just think rather than spending all this money Kudos Arena, why don't you put in your home loans and grow Kudos Bank? Word of mouth that you are a cheaper first home lenders. Thanks for your feedback. We're very happy to take that on board. Your expenses have grown and your profits shrunk. Somewhere you've, you've lost the ball somewhere. Well, actually, we had a record profit year last year, yeah, so. So I'm not, I'm not sure about – sure, I'm happy to have a chat with you separately. You wouldn't be happy with half a percent? Well, I think we need to take in context that we operate an organisation on the basis of returning value to our members and we're very proud of our history in doing that. We're very proud of our history in operating a bank with very sound risk management practices and – in the service that we offer to our customers who tell us they they enjoy the service they receive at Kudos and we're very happy and proud to service our members in that way and appreciate your feedback. 
Uh, marketing is a complex business and we have all sorts of ways of trying to promote the brand and grow the business and uh, we employ a team of people who are very focused on making sure that we represent you know, kudos to the broader market and we work with lots of different sources of business to our, to, to, to our bank and what I can say is that we will always continue to do the very best that we can by our members. Good afternoon, my name is Roman. I'm a member myself, plus I have a total of five business entities with your bank. I'm proud member since 1995, and I very, was very, very happy to last year, to this year. Uh, regarding the remuneration, you guys deserve remuneration, like everyone else you're actually pretty low compared to your competitors and we need to keep to have top people at the, at the bank if you want to grow and continue provide good service but i do have problem with your service first time ever i put three complaints which is contradict everything what you're saying here so you're blocking transfers in my name in different institution blocking for no reason ah. mm. i'm getting a lot of emails to sms from brisbane saying there's a fraud happening on your yeah. account which nothing happened it's going from my name to the same name in different institution you still blocked it yeah. even day before you transfer money with no problem yeah Thank on another hand and I was told it's for your safety. I said, oh, great. But you already transfer money. On the other hand, uh, somehow it's happened mistake. It's, I'm sure it's not me, it's bank. That instead of transfer from my personal account, I transfer funds from super fund account. And it's a legal transaction for me because it's super yeah. fund money going to private sure. member. So I could not understand what happened. So I contact you guys. Great service when you actually get in through. Great service. And the guy said, yeah, 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 I can see it's blocked. I said, okay, please block it. Please do not release the funds. He said, yeah, yeah, I can see it. I said, okay, thank you very much. And 10 minutes later, I get a phone call from your manager. said, sorry, we transfer your funds. So what? On one way of blocking it, on the second hand, no transaction ever happened from this account, and you still transfer the funds. How you can do it? It's a contradict what you just were telling me, continue to tell me. Okay. Um, actually, sorry, what was your name? Roman. Roman. Thank you for your feedback, Roman. I had exactly the same thing happen to me recently. I had a phone, <laughs> phone call from a Queensland number and I was thinking, who is this? And I don't normally answer the phone if I don't know who it is. And exactly the same thing happened So, um, with the blocking of funds. So what we are finding um, as an organisation is the prevalence, prevalence of cybercrime is is invading every part of our business. And you, you will have seen us talk about this on our website, on our social media channels and in our newsletters, about all the steps we're trying to take to protect members' funds. And we do realise that there's a friction point at times when we have to do that filtering process of double checking, was that transaction supposed to go through? And I must tell you, as a board, we discuss this regularly. At every board meeting, we get reports that say the number of fraud transactions that are perpetrated against our members and that are uh, where members lose, in some instances, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And it is absolutely heartbreaking when we find out that people have been um, victims of fraud. So this is something we have struggled with and we do struggle with. And we recognise that on occasions it can cause inconvenience to people. So we, we are working, we have implemented some new systems and some new tools to minimise the number of times that happens. But as a board, we don't apologise for the fact of trying to keep our members' money safe. Um, and you know, we just, I have to tell you, 
this is a huge industry that we're grappling with. So uh, I do apologise for your experience. Um, I, I hope you understand we're trying to do our best to keep your money safe. And I'd like to speak with you separately about the other transaction because I'm not sure what happened with that one and it shouldn't have happened. But it's a really tough thing. And, you know, I mean, I can tell you we recently did have, you know, some, every day we have someone who is subject to a scam. People ring up, they, they, they contact vulnerable people, they are, you know, their money is getting channeled, they're getting um, tricked into giving over access to their computers, their mobile banking apps, and, and it's absolutely heartbreaking and devastating to see the effect this has on people. So it's something we, we're grappling with and we're doing our best to try and find a way to help everyone keep their, their money in their own bank accounts and not in the fraudsters' accounts, but I do accept it can be challenging at times. Madam Chairwoman, you can't understand frustration. What happened to me is I transfer funds day before and I'm going to, 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 to airplane to fly from Sydney to Vancouver, 15 hours non-stop flight. And I'm checking and I can see funds is blocked. Yeah. I contact you waiting for 20 minutes. I log on the line to, to board the plane and then you guys are not you, the call center answer and start to go with security question. I have 100 people around me and I need to provide all the personal information to resolve this problem. Yeah. It's absolutely frustrating. Yeah. On the other hand, I would worry till I get to Vancouver, as I said, it's 15 hours till I get and I will check it. So we're talking about large amount of money and I will be worried all flight. You can't do it. Even the day before, I talked to your call center and I told them, look, I'm going to transfer this large amount of money. Please allow it. Yeah, 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 no problem. And then in the morning before the flight, funds blocked. Mm. Thank you. I, I'll, I'll come and find you and have a chat afterwards. Thank you very much for your feedback. My name is Peter Shaw. <coughs> current friend of mine, amongst most banks, is the closed down offices. Oh, yes, the city office in Sydney. It was very unfortunate that that was compulsorily acquired by the government. Um, and we did, we were left with no home in the city. Um, look, we're always, we don't have any plans to close any offices and we're always looking at how we can deliver our service better. Um, watch this space. We're just constantly looking at how we can we can deliver on that. It's 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 not an easy challenge, but um, it was unfortunate that we lost our Hunter Street branch. Mm. Thank you for the question. Do we have any other questions? I don't see any online. Oh yeah, sorry. I do have three questions. Sure. Um, so I actually do support. Um, Qdos Bank being a member-owned bank that's customer-owned, um, that cut, that puts its customer first. Um, that was actually why I joined Qdos Bank. Um, now, speaking of putting customers first, um, with the rising with the rising scams, um, when a customer does get scammed, do we reimburse what was lost to the customer, even if it's not recoverable? And uh, if we don't, um, if we try to do it, would that be something that's viable? Uh, my second question is, um, I don't know if we're a customer of Cusco, so Credit Union Services Corporation Australia Limited. Um, it's recently announced that it wants to IPO. Um, do we support its IPO uh, if we're a customer? And the, other th uh, the third thing is um, in regards to just politics in general. So um, a number of organizations in this year have obviously supported um, things like, you know, Yes23, um, you know, the voice and that kind of stuff. But I, I, I've seen that um, Qdos Bank overall has maintained quite, you know, a, a political neutral position, um, which I think is appropriate. Uh, can you just confirm if that's something that we did as well? Okay. The first question was around... Um, um, scams. Scams. Um, so we work with our... This is a really difficult part of our business. We work with our customers on every occasion. We're part of a network and we can often help them retrieve funds. Um, but 
we just look at every case on a case by case basis. So that's so what I can say to that. Guarantee that you know we, there might be a reimburse or anything. No, there's no guarantee, and that's why we need to ensure that. And and that's the that's the friction point that I was talking about earlier, right? So if you give your pin even inadvertently to someone else and they transact on your account, um, you know that's if 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 everyone went around uh, trying to. To, to you know, claim that they didn't mean to, it would mean that we wouldn't have a banking system anymore. So we do have to be very mindful, but we do work very closely with our customers and in many cases are able to help in blocking, like we talked about, scams. In fact, we block thousands of them every week. Yeah. yeah. And the second question was around, was that Cusco? Cusco, yeah. yeah. Are we a customer of Cusco? Ah uh, no, no. And, so we don't really yeah. care about and so we out. don't and we don't comment on what yeah. other people's business yeah. strand strategies the, are. Yeah. And the third thing is just oh, political, about political voice. Political neutrality sure. in general. Well, look, um, you know, we we just recognise that we have members of many different persuasions and our goal is on serving our members, uh, our people, our planet, and doing our best at that. And uh, we just keep ourselves pretty busy with that yeah. front. Yeah, cool. Thanks for that. You're most welcome. Any other questions? Well, that being the case, uh, we'll now consider and if thought fit, pass the following resolutions that with effect from 1 October 2023, 5.1, the remuneration for each director be set at $75,527 per annum plus statutory superannuation. 5.2, subject to members approving resolution 5.1, the additional allowance paid to the chair will decrease to 80%. And 5.3, the additional allowance of 25% currently paid to the deputy chair and chairs of the audit and risk committees also be applied to the chairs of each remaining board committee. The returning officer has informed me that 40 members have provided an undirected proxy in favour of the chair regarding resolutions 5.1, while 40 members have provided undirected proxies in relation to resolutions 5.2 and 5.3. I have informed the returning officer that I intend, insofar as I am eligible, to cast all undirected proxy votes received from members in favour of all three of these resolutions. Once again, other attendees who hold undirected proxies have been provided with additional voting cards, and I ask they would complete a voting card for each personal vote, as well as any proxy that they hold. I'll pause briefly for you to vote if you've not already done so, and you can then hand your votes to the returning officer. Thank you, everyone. I now close the voting on all resolutions. The results will be tabulated by the returning officer computer share after the close of the meeting and announced on our website tomorrow. We'll now move to agenda item six, general business. And before I ask for general business, I encourage any members who have questions relating to their accounts or account operations to contact us via secure mail within the online banking system on the website or via our app or by speaking with a service team member in our contact centre so that you can discuss those matters confidentially. We will be posting most questions raised before or during the meeting today on our website over the coming days, um, including any questions that we don't get time to address today. Is there any general business? Now is the time for you to ask any questions you may have. I'm not seeing any online questions. Robert, just checking. Are you sure I'm not failing the technology? Okay. And I think we've addressed the other questions in the earlier business. 
So while um, I just wait to see if any questions do come through online, I will address some questions that were pre-submitted by our members in the lead up to the event. There was an additional uh, pre-submitted question from uh, Jason Miles who asked, can you confirm how leveraged Kudos Bank is in the derivatives market? So Kudos only uses derivatives currently in the form of interest rate swaps to manage the interest rate risk from a fixed rate loan um, or term deposits in order to protect the bank against adverse movement in interest rates. We don't use derivatives for speculative purposes. As per note 29 in our financial statements, we had $447.5 million in swaps outstanding at the end of June with a fair value of $9.5 million, with the majority of the swaps maturity, maturing in the next nine months as our fixed rate loans expire. Three further questions were proposed by members, although they weren't proposed to be raised at the meeting. So we've responded to those outside of the meeting. Um, I'm just checking, it doesn't look like there's, oh yes, we have one question here. Yes, sure. Well, you'd be aware that there's a lot of consolidation going on in the um, in the mutual banking sector. So we, we are constantly in discussions with our other peers within that part of the sector, and it's a strategy that as a, as, as a sector is being considered. And, and we also have um, regular con conversations with other banks. For example, during COVID, we were directed by the regulator to have conversations with other mutual banks so that if anyone needed help, being smaller banks, there would be an element of cooperation around that. And other than that, we deal with questions like that on an ongoing basis as part of our strategy planning. Oh, as I've mentioned, we're not considering IPO. We're very committed to being a customer-owned bank. We'll probably address that question, and I'm happy to take uh, take that up as a uh, because I've already answered that question twice. So. Uh, I have answered the question. We're not considering an IPO as 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 Kudos Bank and as a customer-owned bank. Is there an additional question? Sure. Okay. The additional question that's come through is from Christopher Rodriguez. We will soon see the fixed rate cliff become a reality. What are you doing to retain these customers coming off the fixed rate? Also, what's your strategy to grow deposit products and capital? I'm sure APRA will have a lending cap and you'll need to deal with it. That's actually a very good question and we are very proactively managing our fixed rate loan book. We um, have within our contact centre and within our operations teams dedicated staff who have been contacting our customers who are rolling off fixed rate home loans to help them to identify what um, alternatives are available to them. So it is something we're managing very actively with our members to help them with that transition. Um, the strategy around growing deposit products is one that once again we're constantly uh, massaging, we review regularly what is the balance between sustainable pricing and competitive pricing that meets our member needs and it's something we consider on a day by day, week by week basis. So that's really a big part of what we do as a bank. And um, as to APRA and our prudential requirements, I can confirm and assure that we operate within all of our prudential requirements and have regular and ongoing discussions with APRA, which includes submitting regular returns to the regulator around all of those prudential requirements that, and there are many, that we're required to comply with. So um, that's something we're very familiar with and, uh, and engaged with as well. It's a great question. Are there any other questions? No. Nope. Well, I can see we have no further questions. I'd like to thank members very much for their participation today. I'd also like to thank our directors, our management and our employees in attendance today. A special thank you to you all for taking the time to attend our meeting and particularly for your ongoing loyalty and support. The outcome from our final result, results that we voted on today will be published on our website tomorrow. 
on behalf of the board, I'd also like to wish you and all of your families a very happy Christmas and New Year. And I now declare the 64th Annual General Meeting of Kudos Bank closed. Thank you.